Hello, and welcome to my very first ever AMA Ask Me Anything. I've never done one before, but I thought seeing as I reached like 30K on Twitter, I should do something, I don't know, a little bit different. And I thought I'd give you the chance to ask me questions because you do a lot. I never get the chance to answer them all, so let's just actually just sit down. Just, just, just do this. Let's just do this fucking thing, right? Let's just do it right now. Sorry, I've had like eight coffees today. It's made me weird. Gonzo, K-R-S. Oh yeah. What would you be doing now if you didn't pick presenting as a profession? So I actually studied photography and I did it as a degree. And then I kind of randomly got into presenting and thought, oh, well, I could always go back and do photography at another time. Presenting, you can't really be 80 or 70 and be doing that because you know you're female and you're too old and haggy. So um, I chose that. Thinking a lot after being in Tokyo, I went mad and took loads of photos and kind of got the itch again. So I think I'm gonna set up like an old Instagram. I feel like I need something in the background that's nothing to do with my job because everything is kind of a bit to do with my job and the balance between my life and my professional life. There's like literally no difference. It's all the same, so. Uh, Nick43992 says pizza or pancakes. And Nick, that's a stupid question because both. There is no way I could live my life without either. Both, if you told me I could no longer have them, would make me want to die inside and make me very sad because I really, really like them. Pancakes, what I have, actually both of those are things that I have as a treat because if it was up to me, I would eat them all day, every day and that's not realistic when you play video games and you sit in a desk for a job because you would be huge. Michael Elder, Fool of Rock, says, uh, what's the best, worst thing about being freelance? So freelance, first of all, it's brilliant because I can generally work my own schedule and if I don't have anything on, I can guiltily lie in bed for hours and be like, ha ha, I don't have to get out of bed. But then I get up anyway because that's just me. So there's a lot more freedom. I mean, I could have done presenting at like IGN or GameSpot or something like that where I would have been paid like a good salary and still got to do presenting and still got to do video games, but that wasn't really my life plan. Um, I wanted a chance to take gaming mainstream and push it mainstream because I was frustrated by there not being content on mainstream platforms and that was something I felt like I could help facilitate. But the path that I chose is a lot longer a lot more unstable and I spent a lot of time wondering about what am I doing and this is a really silly idea. You're an idiot, why didn't you just take a nine to five? But now that I've persevered and I'm at the juncture where I can kind of pick and choose work, it's bloody brilliant is what it is, but it takes a little while to get to that stage. Plus you have to do your own taxes, which is so awful, I can't even explain. But you do get freedom. Anyway, there are pluses and minuses. Uh, pluses in that you do get freedom, minuses in that it's unstable and you freak out a lot about money. Until you get a couple of good regular jobs and then you calm down. I printed these out because I'm retro. Cupcake McFluffy. Mmm, I want a fluffy cupcake. After VR, what do you think the next big thing will be? Like matrix, like plugs or physical objects changing shape on the go or question mark? Oh, okay. So I think augmented reality is probably gonna change our lives more potentially than VR, just because we all carry phones around with us. Um, it's easier to augment things. Uh, VR is still expensive and it's difficult to have in your home. I think VR arcades will be a huge thing. I'm gonna go away for a spa weekend and play Borderlands with my friends. Okay, that's a thing that I want to happen in the future. So in the same way, You'll watch a film at home, but you'll still go to the cinema. That'll be the kind of VR experience for me. And then education and stuff like that, I think that'll be huge in schools. So augmented reality, I think will be massive. I think we're gonna see a huge advent in gaming, certainly of more kind of haptic feedback. So where you feel like you're really in the game and you can experience some of what that's like. Yeah, but augmented reality, huge. S augmented reality is so hot right now. That's my fashion face. I don't know what a fashion face is. Okay. Turning the page. Sorry, I'm skipping through loads, but I wanted to sort of pick up like a good selection. M. Magmar, 
from Twitter says, would you ever want to start streaming on Twitch? Why was that sentence really hard? I think about this a lot. Like I feel really frustrated because there's a lot of things that I would love to make a lot of gaming content, but I really, really struggle with time because I'm so busy and I'm desperate. I have endless lists of like little formats and ideas that I really want to do. And when I try to do them and sit down, I get really stressed because I just don't physically have the time to do it. Twitch streaming is something that's a lot easier because it's just kind of live and as and when. So yes, potentially that's more likely than more YouTube gaming content just because oh, I just wish I had the time. I feel incredibly frustrated. What I need is like someone to outsource all this stuff to so I could just sit at home, record a bunch of stuff and be like, and give it to them and then they do all the rest of the YouTube thing. I, I could manage it then, I could manage that time. Sitting down and playing a game or setting aside time is fine. It's the edits, man. Even when I do straight playthroughs, it's just, it's just killer. I'm really enjoying doing the vlogs though and I, and I can kind of do that on the go so it sort of fits into my life a little bit better which is why I've been kind of pushing more on the vlogs. So my camera died. Uh, this shot might be completely different, I can't remember. Anyway, Michael Robinson, um, Robinson91, says, Being friends with Jane, this is Jane Douglas of Outside Xbox, uh, will we ever get to see you make a special appearance on Outside Xbox? So, technically, I have. I was involved, oh god, was it at EGX one year? Uh, they asked me to come in and play, we played some Grand Theft Auto and I started a punch fun run. You know in Grand Theft Auto when you hit people and they get really scared and they run away? So I basically took everyone down to the seaside and I started punching people and then tried to turn it into a fun run. But if you are also asking whether I'd like to do it again, yes, 100%, uh, Jane's one of my best mates, so yeah. I have any time, any chance to play more games with her is all good with me. James Hiscock says, um, what's your best advice for keeping the black dog, i.e. depression, at bay? And don't apologize for a downer question. It's really important that you talk to other people with depression because all the stuff I've learned on how to combat depression and keep my life okay and manageable has come through <laughs> trial and error severe trial and error so I'm really really happy to pass on like the best advice I've been thinking a lot actually about doing a vlog about how I kind of beat my depression and how I how I manage it because I've tried everything and I found stuff that works for me consistently yes you still have moments but those moments are nowhere like not even close to where they were when they're bad, you know, like not close. So you still have your moments, but you just learn to deal with it a better way. Anyway, if you'd like a video like that, let me know because I really feel like that's something I could help with. Anyway, so uh, my top piece of advice in terms of depression, and I know it's the last thing you would ever, ever want to do. Actually, there's a, there's a couple things. First of all, don't drink, don't do drugs. It's just going to make it so much worse it will push you over the edge, don't do it. But more importantly, just in terms of like keeping it at bay and keeping yourself okay day to day, the best thing I ever did for my depression was exercise. And I know it's the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do because fuck, you can't even get out of bed. Force yourself. Gillian Michaels does a really, really amazing workout. It's 20 minutes a day for 30 days, it's called 30 Day Shred. It's pretty simple, but it's it's really good for getting into the routine of doing it every single day and once you've done it for a month you've created the habit you feel the benefit of it so you don't have to convince yourself to get out of bed because your body knows it makes you feel better when you do it so even when you feel terrible there's some part in your head that's saying if you just do it you're gonna feel better you know in the same way like you'll drink you'll smoke you'll do drugs or whatever it is that gets you through it and it's that gut urge just I don't want to feel this anymore and you know that by doing that you get that sensation before you do it that you're going to feel different you're going to feel better albeit you'll feel worse later you get that same kind of inclination where you're like if I just do something a little bit of exercise I can't tell if I don't work out like coming back from Japan I've had a bit of a tough time because I couldn't do the sort of normal workouts that I do and with kind of stress and traveling and stuff like that, I went down. I went down the past couple of weeks. I know what I need 
there has to be structure to keep you going. Anyway, I'm waffling on. I should save all this for if I do a longer video, sorry. Paul Fawcett asked me, has the amount of online abuse you've received increased or decreased since your TED talk? So actually, Misogyny Monday, I post a lot less. I think that people are kind of wising up that maybe don't, which is good, I guess. I hope it doesn't mean that they're just going somewhere else. If you read under the comments under my TED talk, you'll notice that it's horrific. And I don't know if any of you guys saw like some of the 30 minute debunking rebuttals that people, you know, exposing my theory as being incorrect. Um, I hate to break it to you guys. It was just an opinion and you didn't debunk shit. Also, maybe try being a woman. I'm not going to tell you what it's like being a guy and how that is and I wouldn't write a 30 minute rebuttal video telling you of all the wrong things about being a man. Because I've never been a man, I have no idea. I can try and understand but I certainly wouldn't with sever severity and sincerity say to you, you've got this all wrong, your experience of life as a man is incorrect. Because I'd be a dick, I'd be a complete dick, that's so arrogant to assume that you know what it's like. Anyway, so you can read the comments if you like underneath. Although maybe I should just go mining there for Misogyny Monday. I'm not gonna run out stuff for the next like 10 years. Anyway, uh, Jessica Page says, um, where do you see yourself in 10 years time? So my goal in life is to host a mainstream entertainment show. Not necessarily just about gaming. I've got a good idea for a gaming one though. I do tell people about it, but they're not quite at that stage to hear it yet. I'm working on it, guys. I'm really working on it. It's just long. So to be a host like a mainstream entertainment show, I'd love to do that. Anything live also, I love to do that. Like I really buzz off it. That'd be cool. Um, running my own business. I've got some cool ideas of things that I would like to do around exercise because it's ch changed my life and my outlook so much that I'd like to be able to impart some of that back and inspire some people to get healthy. That would be cool. Um, what else? Oh, there's loads of stuff. Um, yeah. So anyway, running some businesses. Um, I'd love to be able to kind of live abroad um, a few months of the year, like maybe work. The dream would be like working eight months and then having four months off, just living somewhere completely random. and. Every time I've traveled, generally speaking, I'll stay in one place or like around one place because I really want to get to know it. So I'd love to be able to do that like every year, just live, I don't know, in Colombia, in, I don't know, Canada or just something. I don't know. I think that'd be really, really fun. I'd love to do that. I'd love, love, love to do that. Um, maybe getting back into photography, but more just for me than any kind of financial thing. I think one of the mistakes I made when doing presenting was not keeping like a creative outlet for myself that was nothing to do with work. I should really have kept up with my photography even if it was every once in a while because that passion and that desire doesn't really go away. I think I've just ignored it, which was, don't do that. <laughs> Jessica Green says, what's the weirdest thing that's happened to you since becoming a presenter? Probably that fool that tried to reverse catfish me. That was quite weird. Yeah, I mean, dude, seriously, what are you doing? Next, right, I'm getting through them. Well, not really, I'm missing out loads and I'm really sorry. Anthony Binder wants to know, zombie apocalypse or alien invasion? Well, in terms of what I have, the method of my death. Oh, it's gonna be one of them. Uh, zombie apocalypse because I feel I'm better equipped to deal with it and I already have a plan. And actually where my flat is right now is Michael Wood says, why are there no game shows on TV? We need one. So um, Dave's actually got one called Go 8-Bit. It's quite retro though. I kind of want to do, if I'm going to do a show, I want it to be like quite cutting edge because gaming's kind of moved on from like platformers and stuff like that. I'd love to make um, a show that really kind of shows off the best of gaming. The reason why there aren't any video game uh, shows out there is because Commissioners still see gaming as a real niche. I mean, I would sit, I would do sit and have conversations and talk about how that's really changed and, you know, the idea of who a gamer is, uh, is different. It's not just, oh, guys in their pants covered in crisps in their room, like completely socially awkward. They still see it like that, unfortunately. 
it is changing very slowly. The conversations I'm having are starting to change, which is a good sign. So I don't think, well, we're still a little way off it happening, but when it happens, it's going to explode and everyone will have a gaming show because it's the most popular form of entertainment in the world. So they'd be mad not to. It's just a slow process. Oh, no one wants to watch anyone play video games. This is literally was told to me by a million different production companies and commissioners. I mean, I have been working, guys. I've been really trying hard to get stuff off the ground, but this is what takes up so much time. I have meetings and da da da, and like things don't really happen, and it can be quite. I mean, I've literally spent the past few years just having these conversations over and over again. It's very frustrating, but I'm not giving up because I know it will happen and I want to make sure when it happens it's done right because we deserve it as gamers. <laughs> okay, uh, Gaslander asks, what's my favourite cheese? Is this a serious question because I could fill up a whole vlog just about cheese? Okay, my top three. There is a place called La Cave du Fromage or something in uh, South Kensington. So if you're going to like the V&A or the Natural History Museum one time, you can pop in. It's amazing. You can sit down for lunch and they just feed you bread and wine and cheese. Oh my God. It's literally the best thing in the entire world ever. So three of those cheeses they sell there are incredible. I heartily recommend them. Number one, they have a really soft cheese. It's full, like chock-a-block full with a layer of truffle. It's delicious, it's basically cheese crack. So it just depends whether you want to be addicted to cheese or not. Second, they have a blue cheese that's cured in red wine. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> the third one is like a really strong Gruyere, like a reserve Gruyere you can sometimes get from Sainsbury's. It's super expensive. It's like that, it's a really strong hard cheese and they grow calcium deposits in it. So what it means is, is there's like a weird honeycomb texture at bits during the cheese. It's not sweet like honeycomb, but it's just the texture of it. Like think of cheesy honeycomb. Makes it sound disgusting, actually amazing. Ricky Webb wants to know what's your proudest... <laughs> Ricky Webb wants to know what's your proudest uh, accomplishment. And giving up uh, booze for a year. I was quite pleased with myself about that. That was quite hard for charity. Um, oh God, my food's done. Wait a minute, I'll be back. Sorry, sorry, um, I was cooking sweet potato chips. Anyway, what were we talking about? What's your proudest accomplishment? Giving up alcohol for a year for charity, that was hard. TED talk last year, that was hard. Um, I lived in a refugee camp once, that was not hard, but difficult in different ways. I think, excuse me, I think, um, I think my proudest accomplishment though is my life in that it's always been a bit of a struggle for me to be happy, like it's been hard, and I really worked hard at trying to make the life that I want and finding ways to keep myself happy and not just tumble into darkness. <laughs> Sorry. If you can't laugh at it, what can you do? Um, it's been really difficult. I mean, anyone who suffers from depression will know how hard it can be and how terrifying some of the things you say to yourself are. Uh, so yeah, and, and doing this job has not been <laughs> that helpful because I think you need to have stability in your life to really be okay. And this job doesn't really give that, but I've persevered and I've realized I have to sort of minimize stress and things like that. And how to do that is just being prepared and being ready. And like, there are things that I can do basically to make it manageable. So I'm really proud of managing to do all this and to be where I am and to be happy. That's, uh, there were obviously a lot of times where I never thought it would be possible, so, yeah. Uh, Mike John says, what's the hardest thing you've had to overcome to get to this point in your career? And I think that is just doubt, doubt in what you're doing because everybody else has a full-time job and they earn money and they buy houses and flats and have cars and have children and they're doing all these wonderful things like going on holiday and you're really poor and you don't have a lot of work 
and everyone looks at you like you're crazy because you're doing this. And getting past that point is tricky. To know, I don't know, to get past it and to be successful and to be happy with yourself. And I guess just not feeling like you made the wrong decision in life. I mean, that's the fear for everyone. That's FOMO, you know, making the wrong decision terrifies all of us. And especially with something like your career, thinking that you've made the wrong decision and that your whole life has been a pointless waste of time and da, 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 that, these are the kind of things that will go through my head. So just knowing, yeah, knowing that I've uh, overcome that and basically just overcoming that point where you feel like you want to give up and just do something else because uh, it takes a long time to build up the contacts and to get into the point where you're getting regular work. That takes a long time. And a lot of people fall by the wayside and you just got to stick it out. You just got to stick it out. Look at the end of the day, right? If you're passionate and you're willing to learn and you want to do something, just bloody stick it out because eventually you will get to the point you need to be. If you are uh, arrogant and you don't want to learn and you just don't get on with people, then you're going to have a bit of a problem. You need to be humble and amenable and not basically just not be a dick and stick at it and you'll do fine trust me danny haywood says uh when i see your bbc shows you are always playing on consoles do you ever play on pc yes i do i have a beautiful little mini pc that i keep in my lounge which i love to bits it was custom built so yeah i do when i'm at home i play on pc as well as console but we're not quite at the stage on the BBC yet of fully going PC. It will happen, but just, just let us ease into it. Uh, Daniel Moore wants to know, I'd like to know if you prefer radio work, TV work, or making YouTube videos. Whew. So TV is what I kind of started in and will always have my heart and soul because I love making visual content. Like I love, love, love it. But I also love doing radio stuff because that's really fun and I like making silly voices. It's not really what you're supposed to do on the radio. But... And YouTube videos, I love. I wish I just had the time to be at home and just obsess about it. Because I've got so many ideas and it's so annoying that I can't do them. I need help. <laughs> I need someone to do it. Um, yeah, I love them all for very different reasons. But my heart and soul is probably TV just because the, the reach and what you get to do with it is so much greater and the access and yeah, you can just make stuff on a really, really big scale. And I love doing YouTube, but you can never quite hit the same mark if you're like self-shooting. It's never gonna be of that kind of high quality. They're basically like you show your mom and you're like, look at this really glossy thing that I made or someone else made that I stood in front of the camera for, but I'll take the credit. Plus also my parents finally are like, oh, the BBC, we've heard of them. I think that's it, that's loads. I've just caned all of the battery of this camera and also the card. So I hope that's answered. Yeah, was that okay? I guess. Um, sorry, I live in disaster zone four of London or whatever. Anyway, um, so I hope that was cool. Uh, I'd like to do another one at some stage if I've left off some questions or you wanna just post below what you'd like the next questions to be because I'm quite happy to talk about anything. Uh, maybe you want them to be thematic about something. I don't know. Uh, you kind of tell me what you like. Um, I definitely, I'd like to do a vlog uh, about depression at some point. So if that's something that kind of you'd like to hear about, it sounds really depressing, obviously. Um, yeah, let me know anyway. And cool, uh, thanks. That was fun. Um, yeah, the end, you can go now.